Chapter 11, Biological Functions. Question, Black Roots, did the ancients go to the bathroom? Response, you may find this hard to believe, but the reason you go to the bathroom is really to remind you that you're not eating right. You are eating the wrong food. Food that creates gas and residue in your stomach and bladder, you're eating too much of it and you are eating too often on an improper schedule. So it's really a safety mechanism made by the body to remind you of all those things. It's exactly like when you see ants in your home. That means you have food where it's not supposed to be and it could create a health hazard and harm you and your family. So the ants, roaches, rats, etc., come in not only to get that food, but to act as a warning to you that you are putting your health at risk and you need to clean up your house. The same is true with gas and constipation. It's the body's way of telling you that you need to clean up your act and start eating right. When you do that, then you will no longer need to be warned in that way. Your stomach will settle down. Your body will become healthier and you will approach a state of health that is closer to what we had in our ancient perfect bodies. Of course, you will not achieve that 100% because our present bodies have some inherent weaknesses that we inherited from mixing with the weaker races. These have to do with the fact that our 12 strands of DNA cannot be as fully active in these bodies as they were in our ancient bodies, but it's possible to activate our DNA to the point where we can live a healthy life for a thousand years. The more perfect your health becomes in this body, the closer you will be, be to be being able to resurrect consciously in one of the perfect bodies. The closer you get to that state, the less you will need safety mechanisms to warn you about the effects of unhealthy practices and unhealthy eating habits. Ultimately, these safety mechanisms are designed to prod you in a particular direction, given that we are in a state of self-forgetfulness. So the body has created all these discomforts to constantly urge us to keep working on our body and mind to overcome the self-forgetful state. That is the ultimate purpose of all these mechanisms, including the fact that we need to go to the bathroom. When we reach that state where we are no longer self-forgetful, when we know who we are able to con consciously communicate with our higher self, then all things in our body that serve only the purpose of being a safety mechanism will no longer be needed. Being in constant contact with the first self is all we need to live in harmony with everything around us. We will no longer need roaches, rats, stomach constipation, etc., to remind us to move in the right direction. So it should be clear then as to why the ancients did not experience any of these things. They were not in self-forgetfulness, hence they did not need external stimuli to pride them. This is true not only of external stimuli, it is true also of how their bodies were constructed internally. Their bodies did not have the types of things we have in our bodies, whose only function is to warn of us of the dangers of bad habits, and the reason being simply because they did not engage in bad habits. When I say the types of things, I mean specific things like the bladder and the lower intestine, which leads to the anal opening. The only purpose of the anal opening is to let out the residues left behind when we eat more than we need to, or eat the wrong food, as well as eating on a wrong schedule. If we ate the right food at the right time and only as much as we needed, there would not be any residue left in the stomach and bladder. People assume that urinating and defecating are an absolute biological necessity just because they see that all people and animals engage in this biological act. This is simply not true. These activities are the direct result of having residue in the body and nothing else. They are not a biological necessity. We make residue when we end up with more food in the body than we need. This is true for both people and animals. Animals don't have a choice in the matter. They just follow what people do. When people started to overeat 50,000 years ago and to eat the wrong foods, animals just started to do the same. Had we not done this, there would be no residue left in our bodies after we eat. Hence, there would be no need for a bladder or an anal opening. All the food we eat would be converted directly to energy. This happens with plants today. When they take in minerals and water, all of it is turned into energy for the growth of the plant. There is no residue. That means they naturally take in only what they need. This was the case as well with the ancients. They ate and drank only as much as they needed and all of it was turned into energy, leaving no residue. So they did not urinate or defecate. Their bodies did not have an anal opening. Of course, someone may say, if they ate food and none of it came out as residue back to the earth, 
then would that not deplete the earth? Eating all that food and never giving any of it back to the mother earth, it would seem like we would eventually eat up the whole earth. After all, food is matter and all matter must be recycled and recirculated. That is actually a good question. The answer is that energy is also part of the recycling process. In the universe, matter is converted to energy all the time and then back to matter again. We have an energy body also called our body of action. So the food they ate was converted into energy in the action body. And when they, the energy is used for material activities, then that energy is recycled back again into matter such as the overall balance is maintained. All the food and liquid they took into the body got into their bloodstream to energize the body. Some of the liquid, of course, is used to lubricate the eyes and mouth and so on, and some came out of sweat to cool down the body when they had to exert too much. Sweat is not an elimination of residue, but a, necess a necessary cooling mechanism. Even so, they did not sweat co copiously like people do today. They would only get tiny sweat beads on their extremely fine skin whose pores are so small that on first look, you would think their skin had no pores at all. Moreover, it was simply not possible for them to eat more than they needed. If they were to try, which of course they never did, then the body would reject the food and it would come back out of their mouth. I'm sure you have seen a baby rejecting food like that. So they never did that after they passed their infancy. They learned when they were infants that the body cannot be force fed when it has had enough. Because of this, they were incapable of having residue in their bodies. And that is the reason why they did not have an anal opening. The anal opening and bladder began to develop 50,000 years ago when people deliberately lost their proper eating habits. Over a period of many thousands of years, they slowly but surely pour small extra amounts of food and liquid into their stomachs and forced themselves to hold it down. The body responded by slowly developing a pouch to store the extra food and another for the extra liquid. That is how the lower intestine and the bladder were formed. As time went on, the pressure of the residue in the lower, this lower intestine forced an opening to form so that excess food could be expelled. With the bladder, there was already an opening, so the body just formed an extra valve to regulate the two channels, one for semen and the other for urine in males. Then animals got their instructions from the magnetic mind of the planet to do the same. It all started slowly and was fully developed after a period of about 20,000 years. This opening serves no other purpose than to remind us that we are in a less than perfect state and we need to continue working to perfect ourselves. When we do, then it will no longer be needed and will cease to exist. This long description that I made here about the purpose of this biological function is really to try and illustrate something parallel but more important, which is that the existence of the light races serve exactly the same purpose. They are to remind us of our state of self-forgiveness. Everything that comes out of their mouths is exactly like that residue and should be treated as such. Once we remember who we are, they too will no longer be needed. When God has completed the creation of the universe and the universe has reached absolute perfection, he will unite with that perfection and take it back into himself. He does not unite with what is less than perfect or that which is still seeking absolute perfection. When the universe reaches perfection, all the plants and animals and objects that will be in it at that time will have reached a state of absolute perfection where they no longer evolve or die. What cannot be perfect will not be in the physical universe. It will be extinct and that includes the non-Black races and all their progeny.